Praise the Lord. This morning, I, I, I don't plan on speaking very long to you, but I do have some, a topic I feel it goes along with the way we, where we've been for the last month or so. Uh, we've been talking about our thought life. And we've been talking about overcoming our thoughts and changing our thoughts and becoming somebody who is more like-minded with Christ. And ultimately, what we, we want to do this year is grow. We can't stay where we've been. We have to continue to go forward and become who God has called us to be as a church, as an individual, as a, you know, everything that God wants to do, we got to see it through. And the way that happens is as we decide to grow. So open your Bibles with me, if you will. You guys, thank you very much. You guys can go ahead and make your way down. Is everything be okay? Open your Bibles with me first. Let's go. Let me see here. We're going to go to a few scriptures to open up with, okay? Oh, well, let's do this. I'll give you one scripture. I'll let you sit down, and we'll go back to them in a minute. Amen? Praise God. Go with me to first one. Let's go to Philippians 4, verse 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Today we're going to tackle uh, uh, something that has hit the church, and it's just not okay that it has. Society has been dealing with this quite a while, quite, I mean, more than ever before, and we're going to see what the Bible says about it today. And that's anxiety and worry. There's too many people that are, that are in, having anxiety attacks, and they're worried all the time, and I believe that we're going to conquer this, and we're going to get that worry out of this place and out of your life, and we're going to see breakthrough today. Amen? Philippians 4, verse 6. It says here, be anxious, so anxiety, right? Be anxious about no, for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now let's go over to Matthew 6. Matthew 6, and I'm just going to read verse 34, and then we'll go back to 25 after we sit down, okay? Matthew 6, 34 says this. Do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Let's pray. Dear God, I come before you, and I, I thank you. I thank you for your word. I pray that we would activate your word today, that today worry and anxiety would be gone out of our life, and we would have the tools we need to overcome it as we go forward so we can continue to grow and continue to be uh, equipped to, to grow in you. I thank you now in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Look at someone next to you say, a changed thought will change your life. And you may be seated. Amen. Now let's go back to Matthew real quick. Matthew in 25, verse 25, I want to read you all of what God says. Now, a lot of people don't think it's bad to worry. Matter of fact, they think worry is okay, but it's not okay. Not, not in the word it says not to do it. And I want to show you how much God is saying that we shouldn't have our, our life be controlled by what if stuff. Like what if this happens? What if that happens? What if this? And before you know it, our whole mindset is controlled in a, in a state of mind that is all activating the wrong. It's like a, it's a mindset that says tragedy is going to happen. <laughs> Pain is coming my way. And it's actually opposite of faith. Worry, it could ruin your health. Worry could ruin your family. Worry could ruin your relationships. And it will, eventually, if you don't grab a hold of these thoughts. It's important that we understand this. Now look at Matthew 6, 25. It says, for this reason I say to you, do not be worried about your life. This is Jesus talking. Do not be worried about your life. As to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body, as to what you will put on. 
Is not life more than food and, more, and body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And who of you, by being worried, can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you? You of little faith, he yells it. You of little faith. Do not worry then, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things. For your heavenly Father knows what you need in all these things. And then the key is right here. Here's the key to worry, okay? But seek first. Come on, say it with me. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things, say it with me, all these things, all these things will be added to you. Goes back to the opening scripture. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Like I said, worry and anxiety has crept into the church. Shouldn't be here. Doesn't belong here. Doesn't belong in our lives. Someone defined worry as stewing without doing. Let me just let that sit in. I kind of like that one. Stewing without doing. I think that's a good definition because there's nothing you could do about your worries since they're oriented to the future. Besides, almost everything we worry about is uncontrollable or at least improbable. <laughs> Since these things we worry about do not usually come to pass, our tendency is to think irrationally, which leads us to believe that somehow through our worrying, we can prevent the events from happening. And that feeds our fears about what might happen. If we were to stop worrying, we would worry about not having something to worry about. <laughs> when we are worried, it completely takes over our self-talk. Our self-talk becomes com like totally consumed with what ifs. What if this happened? What if that happened? Our self-talk has got to be stronger. You, we've been talking about self-talk, about how we speak to ourselves, how what thoughts we choose to think on and what thoughts if we were to think on the right thoughts, it's going to change the outcome of our lives. Now, listen to this. It changes. Listen, when we were worried, it completely takes over our self-talk and it changes to fear-based and doubt-based instead of praise and faith-based. Sometimes our worries lead to the development of compulsive behavior and to phobias. So sometimes we're thinking so much that we could, now some people, have you ever seen those people who don't like to go out in the sun? Because they think, wait a minute, they have to put foil all over them. <laughs> There's people like that, all because they got worried too much. There's some people that they don't, they don't want to, I mean, anything, any, any spider will, will woo, I'm, I'm kind of like that a little bit, to be honest. I can't stand spiders. <laughs> if you want to make me run, tell me, there's a spider right next to me. And I'm, whoa. <laughs> but some people have a, literally arachnophobia, and it's extreme. There's a lot of phobias out there, but how they develop, they develop over how they choose to think on these things. There's a lot of people that are constantly afraid of losing their job. Don't be afraid of losing your job. Not if you're saved, not if you're tithing. Don't worry about it. If you're that person, then, then if your boss could tell you that 
you have to work on Sundays and you can't say no. Because you're afraid of losing your job. I'm going to just go there for a minute. Because I don't think a lot of you work on Sundays, but I got to tell you, if that's you. Now, I got to say this too, because a lot of you are going to get good jobs. But don't forget who gave you the job. Don't forget who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Don't forget who your real provider is. And don't forget how important it is to seek ye first. Seek ye first. What? And if you want all things added, working on Sunday is not seeking ye first. Putting work before God is forgetting who the God is that gave you the work. Come on, give the Lord a hand if you're hearing what I'm saying. I know it. some people need to say ouch on this point, but nevertheless, if you put God first, you don't have to worry about them taking your job away because you know God who is there for you, who gave you the job, will give you a better job if you're taking standards, putting standards upon your Christianity, your lifestyle. I'm not going to worry about these things. The only thing I want to do is seek after God, and I want to seek. I want him to know that I'm seeking him. I want him to know that I seek his righteousness, and I want him to know that he can count on me. But don't worry about losing your job. It gives you a confidence when you go into work, when you know this. Some people go into work fearful. Don't have fear. If you lose it, a better one's coming your way. As long, wait, 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 wait let, me, let me fix this. If you're always running late to work, yeah, you might want to worry about it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Understand what I'm saying. Do your part. Be faithful where you're planted. I don't care where they put you in your job. Prosper where you're planted. I was blessed to hear Pastor Mario, he got, a, he got a, a, a vacation, right, given to him from his job for his level of achievement. Give him a big hand. So him and his wife weren't here last week. They were in Cabo, San Lucas. With an all expense, I you know, hope you don't mind me sharing all your business, man. I was blessed to hear it. That's what I'm talking, that's what God wants to do with you. He, had, he achieved a, a level of success in his job, and they said, if you achieve it, then you'll be blessed. And he got to have a whole week, I believe, in Cabo with everything paid for. He was just kicking it on the lounge chair, ordering food and doing whatever he wanted to do. For, probably getting a hold of God, I hope. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> but he's doing his part. Then God does his part. You have blessings waiting for you. All you got to do is work hard, be faithful, do what God tells you to do, and you could not have fear of losing whatever God's given you. It changes your whole walk, your whole attitude, when you're not always worried about what they might do, what they might say. Anxiety, it's going to cause you to have pain in your body that you don't even know it's the reason why you have Whatever disease at times, it comes from worry and anxiety. I honestly believe this, and I'm going to say this, even though we have people watching on the internet and everything, that there's a lot of people with arthritis, and it comes from this. I'm not a doctor, and I don't claim to have uh, medical backing to explain this, but I do pray for a lot of sick people. <laughs> And I'll tell you, one of the common factors of when I pray for sick people that have problems in their joints, problems in their, in their uh, you know, their physical uh, arthritis, or sometimes it's seen to come out in carpal tunnel, or comes out even sometimes in uh, different, different ways physically, is because they're worried and they're storing up so much worry, and they're constantly living in worry, doubt, and fear, because something in the past has caused them to have a tragedy that makes them think that everything's going to happen bad in the future. It causes people sometimes, the past 
problems causes sometimes people to stay stuck thinking that everything's going to turn out bad. And, and, and even when good things happen, you can't really rejoice in them because you don't think it's going to last. If your marriage is going good for two weeks, you're like, oh, it's good, but it's not going to last. Your husband's treating you good. You love it, but you assume that it's going to stop soon. And you're waiting for it to change. So that way you can say, see, I knew it. I knew you didn't change. Well, your worry has activated the fear of it. You know, if somebody's treating you good, celebrate it. If your husband's treating you better, let him know. Hey, baby, whoa, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, I believe this. If you compliment what's happening right, especially in a man, the women, I'm going to tell you the truth. If you compliment whenever your husband does something right, celebrate it. Praise him for it. Let him know. You're awesome, man. I love what you're doing. Look at you. You're a changed man. If you start acknowledging the things that are right, he will break his back to live up to that standard you see him in. He will not want to look, be less than that in your eyes. But if you don't expect much, then don't ask for much. I'm trying to help some people, man. See, the problem is worry, fear, and anxiety has caused you to doubt the process of God. We're not perfect, I know. Your wife's not going to be perfect, homie. <laughs> not overnight, at least. You're not. We're all a work in progress. But when somebody starts doing something right... Throw a party, man. Celebrate it. Let him know. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord when it happens. Give God glory. Give God honor. And let them know I knew this would be who you are. This is the real you. This is who I've been praying for. I thank God for what's happening in your life. Celebrate the things that God's doing instead of waiting for them to fall apart. We can't live like that. We can't be a church that assumes it's not going to last. A good thing is not going to last. And our self-talk needs to change. Now, I, I'm going to give you four things, and they're just simple practical things, that I believe will break the cycle of worry and anxiety in our life. It's not going to take long for me to do this, so get, just listen good and, and just believe that God's going to take it out of your life if this is you. If it's not you, take good notes because it will be you eventually. We all go through this. And even if you're Mr. Faith and Power, you still come times where fear might come in. Worry comes in. Anxiety comes in. And before you know it, you feel like, whoa, why am I feeling all this? You know, I'll tell you why I say this. Because every level you go to, you're going to go through a lot of this stuff. Even if you're growing, if you God's doing great things... Welcome to the next level when this happens again. It'll happen. But if we constantly know what to do when it happens, you're going to see breakthrough in your life. You're going to continue to go to next levels. And all, as a church, we'll continue to go higher and higher in the things of God. First thing. First thing is decide to change. Decide to make a conscious choice to change your attitude. Your behavior and self-talk has to change. Change is possible by gaining control of our thoughts. Now let's go back to Philippians. Philippians, it gives us a good example of this. Philippians chapter 4 again. Tells us exactly how to do this. Chapter 4, we'll start over here in verse 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, somebody say, start thanking God now. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, it's not wrong to have a need. 
or to feel a, a, a sense of, well, Lord, I, I really have a need. I need you to do this for me, Lord. It's not wrong to feel a sense, but, you know, the second we feel it, instead of worrying about it, we take it to the Lord. We take it to him with a certain attitude. Hear me. It's not good enough just to take your worries to him and keep them worried. Does that make sense? In other words, it says take it to God. Don't be anxious about it. Don't worry about it. But take it to him with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to him, thanking him for hearing it, thanking him for even answering it, taking care of it. So it gives us an attitude. He cares about the attitude that we go into him with prayer. So we make our request known to God. And it says, and what Joe, Pastor Joe was talking about on Friday, the peace of God. Somebody say the peace of God. The peace of God. Say it again, the peace of God. Which surpasses all comprehension. All comprehension will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I like this. Let's go to the next scripture. I, I like when you guys have it up here. Let's read up there. Next one. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren. Now, this is, tells us how we conquer this thing. <laughs> okay? It tells us how we beat negativity, how we beat worry and anxiety. Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? Whatever things are, 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 think on these things. If there's anything of virtue, there's anything of praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Okay, the word meditate, understand it. It means that we not just think on it, but we say it to ourselves. Not just in our thoughts. Actually, this word it goes back to where, where the Lord was telling even Joshua, in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, where he says, be strong and very courageous, meditate on my word day and night, right? You know that scripture? Well, this is the same, same meaning. It means to think about it, say it out loud, and constantly repeat it to yourself. Actually out loud. It's almost like you can imagine somebody talking to themselves. It's literally that. That's why we gave you those three scriptures. I don't know if you remember them. I'm not going to call you up and quiz you today. Pastor Paul did a good job of that last time. But those are some scriptures. And we're going to give you more memorable, more scriptures to memorize. This is a good one. This one will remind you to think right. This one will remind you to think good. If you think as a man thinketh in himself, so is. Okay, that's what the Bible says. So if we're meditating on these things, we're literally speaking these things out loud. To ourself, people should even hear you. <laughs> they should look at you funny at times, I think. Because you ever see certain people that are so happy and you don't know how they keep it going so good? I remember this guy, and one of you reminded me of him. I, I forgot who it was. Somebody reminded me of him years ago. There was a guy in our church. He had a tambourine. And he used to smile like this all the time. Especially when, we, when it was time to praise God, he would eventually, he would sit on the side, and it came a certain point in the service, and he would have the tambourine, and he would start running back and forth like this. Back and forth, with, I, I couldn't stand tambourines, they used to drive me nuts. If you grew up in church, the tambourines used to drive you crazy sometimes. Because ladies would do it right next to you, clink, 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 they'd be off beat and the whole thing. And <laughs> praise God that all of you, I'm not saying they're wrong, they are in the Bible, yes, but still. Know the beat, man. Know how to flow with it if you're going to use it. Some of you should just like, like to make noise, rattle. <laughs> well, this guy, he was off beat a lot. <laughs> so he would get our attention. So one day I go up to him and I ask him, hey, let me ask you something. Do you ever have problems? I was a new Christian. And I saw this guy. I never saw him look bummed out. I always saw him rejoicing, always happy. And, and I go, do you ever have any problems? I'm just curious. <laughs> and he goes, I sure do, brother. <laughs> he goes, 
As a matter of fact, I'm going through one of the worst trials of my life right now. <laughs> click, 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 click. <laughs> and I go, really? He goes, oh, yeah, it's one of the worst ones I've ever had. Oh, praise the Lord. I honestly didn't understand it at the time. I thought he was a little bit crazy. I really did. And he almost looked like that until I started having some trials that needed to really change. I started looking at how he could keep a smile on his face. It didn't matter to me if he was crazy anymore. I wanted to smile like that too. I wanted to rejoice like that too. I wanted to feel that feeling of smiling through my circumstance. And I started to watch this dude, and he kept it going every week after week after week after week. And the deeper I got into knowing who God is, I started to realize he was going through it, but he was growing through it. It's a choice that he made. It's a choice of attitude that we take. We choose to have an attitude about what we're going through. Somebody tell the person next to you and say, it's a choice. It's a choice. We got to choose. We have to choose to decide. We, do, we choose to change, basically. A conscious choice of attitude. Second thing, number two, in breaking the cycle of worry and anxiety is work on your mouth. Watch what you say. Sometimes I would even say it this way. Shut your mouth. Cállate la boca. Is that right? <laughs> what does that mean again? It means quiet something. Quiet your mouth. Quiet that mouth. Amen. I'm working on my Spanish. Cállate. Watch what you say and watch what you voice. Now, in the near future, I wanna, I, I'm going to plan on speaking on the power of words. So I don't want to go too deep into this. But I do want to let you know something. The words that you say, it is vital that you watch it. <laughs> if you tell somebody they're a loser and they'll never be nothing and you're a parent and you're telling your kid, then he's never going to try to achieve much more than that. In other words, when he loses, he'll be like, well, they always told me this is the way it's going to be anyway. So, I don't believe that that's who we should be. Weary, worry and anxiety will make you, make you do stuff like that. You'll say, oh, you're going to end up in prison. You're going to be just like your father. You're going to be just like this. You're gonna be just, that's because you see the fruit of negativity and you see something happening in their life that scares you. And you start speaking it and be careful what you you speak because words have a powerful impact on people now sticks and stone could break my bones but words will never hurt me right remember that that's the biggest lie you've ever seen in my life that is one of the biggest lies of all time sticks and stones will break my bones but words will never hurt yep yeah right words will hurt you more than sticks and stones Words will keep you in a bondage many times. Be careful what you speak out in your house. Be careful what type of things come out of you. Don't let faith or, or fear-filled words be activated in your life. Why? Well, let me just go into a little bit of why words are, are so important. Number one is words create. <laughs> words create. In the beginning was what? And the word was? And the word was. And what did he do at the beginning? And he spoke things. What you speak will create. See what I'm saying? It's going to create some things. Be careful what you speak. Your words are more powerful than you think. 
So in times of anxiety, in times of worry, just be quiet. Just be quiet. Sorry to say it. I don't mean to be rude. But some, but some of us have to watch our mouths. You think you're helping? It's not helping anybody. It's not helping anything. When you start, oh, what if, what if they do this? What if that happens? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if? What if? So watch your words. I'm going to move a little faster. Number three, verbalize instead of your worry words, but speak faith and trust. Not your doubts and worries. Replace thoughts of worry and doubts with thoughts of faith and trust. So when you're having these attacks, shift your thinking. It's a choice you make. Shift it to thinking on stuff of faith and trust. I trust you, God. I'm thinking this. And then you speak these things, and those words also create. Somebody say amen. Now, last thing I want to share is this. We're going to let you go early today because tonight we, it's important to us that you come back. Somebody say level up. Level up is in level three now, right, of level up. Level two. Okay. This is a whole different level of teaching that Pastor Paul is going to be going on. We're going to let you go early with the intention of you coming back tonight to get leveled up. Amen? Somebody say amen. So verbalize faith and trust, and this is how we do this. Number four, Liz, live a life as if. As if. Say as if. The affirmation of faith. And trust is true. You see, it's a choice to live a life of as if opposed to what if. There's too many what if Christians. What if is not who God says you should be. What if this happened? What if that happened? No. No, -uh, I don't believe that's what God's called us to be. Matter of fact, I believe God called you to be an as if Christian. As if Christian. Now, we're going to have fun with this one. Come on, Carly. <laughs> we're going to have church right now. I'll tell you why. Because too many people are going to have to shift their thinking right now, and it's going to happen right now in this sanctuary. I know it. I can feel the power of God already upon me right now. I know he's here in this place. Too many what if people. What if this happens wrong? What if that happens wrong? Instead, you're going to shift. Constantly shift. Do it with me. Go like this. Throw it up and switch. To as if. So I'm going to live as if my what if was taken care of by God. You follow me on this? I'm going to shift to my what if turns into as if God already came through. Come on, clap your hands a little bit. In other words, I'm going to give as if I'm already blessed. I'm going to live as if I've already been healed. I'm going to walk as if I don't have pain no more. Come on, somebody, clap your hands. I'm going to be the type of husband as if. My marriage is going to work. Hey. I'm going to be the type of disciple as if God is living in me and Christ be for me. Who can be against me? Oh. I'm going to smile today as if. I'm going to have joy as if greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am the head. Clap your hands as if God is coming. Come on, clap your hands as if you don't have worry. Clap your hands as if God already did what he said. Praise him. I said, praise him as if he already came through. Some of you got to shift this morning. You got to make.
make a constant shift. Somebody say, I love God. I will praise him as if, as if he is who he said he is. Give him praise now, 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 now. See, the as if Christian lives in another level, it's another realm of faith and trust. God wants us to know who he is. God wants us to see a lot of people, you don't have the freedom because you don't know. If you don't understand, if you don't know what he's done for you, then you're going to stay stuck in worry and anxiety for the rest of your life. When God is saying, live as if what I say is actually true. Live as if my word is real in your life. As if it were yea and amen. And as if you don't have to worry about anything in your life. We're going to conquer this thing right now. We're going to get worry and anxiety out of this place right now. Some of you are taking pills. You're giving pills to your kids. What's making you do that? Worry. Anxiety. You think God can't cure that? A pill cures it better than him? You gotta get some pills out of your purses, out of your, out of your whatever you're holding. Get him out of here. Let God's faith, God's principles, let them be active. Let God's power be demonstrated. Choose right now. Somebody say choose. To get over it. Choose. We're going to break depression in this place today. In the name of Jesus. Lift your hands as high as they go. Come on, lift them all up. Lift them all up. Let's just go for it. Let's let the power of God hit this place. It's time for you to be free in Jesus' name. It's time for you to be free in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody say, I'm free. Say it, I'm free in Jesus' name. Worry and fear and anxiety got to go. I'm free in Jesus' name. I trust you, Lord. Tell him I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It won't work. No weapon formed against me. Come on, sing it. Shall prosper. Oh, it won't work. No weapon for the dance against me. Sing it with him like you know this is true. Shall prosper. Come on, lift your hands. It won't work. No weapon. Come on, sing it loud. Formed against me. Shall prosper.
listen. I'm going to pray for all, those of you. Be honest. No one's going to look at you funny. We all go through it at times. And when I'm going through this, I, I get to this altar quick. I'll be honest with you. There's something about the altar. You get to leave stuff here. You know how much I've left on these altars in this last four years? You know how many tears I've cried at these altars? God has been faithful every time. Every single time. In the same altars, I leave mine, I pray you leave yours here. Leave your worries here. Leave your anxieties here. Leave your fears here. Leave your depression here. If you're going through it, run to this altar. And if you're not, I need you to help me pray for those that are. Come as quickly as you can. And let's come singing this song. Say no.